hold the front page. I'm Lambert Opic and welcome to Press Release, where we find the facts, kill the spin and tell it like it is about the stories making the headlines. This week we'll be looking at tall tales from all around the world and sorting out the reality from the rubbish. First a roundup of the news with events that cause more questions than answers. We explore why Facebook has got away with allowing the live broadcast of a mass murder without facing any legal charges. We take a trip to London to try and find out why everybody else is leaving it. And we ask why a country founded on a people's revolution is determined to try and stop people from revolting. What weirdness, what a week, what a world. Let's get down to the details and separate the political friction from the political fiction. Facebook claimed it removed over a million videos of the New Zealand mosque massacre after the attack in which 50 people were killed or seriously injured in a mass shooting incident. Facebook announced, in the first 24 hours, we removed 1.5 million videos of the attack globally, of which over 1.2 million were blocked at upload. Sounds impressive? Well, up to a point. What this shows is that the system is so open and unregulated that at least 1.5 million attempts at uploading mass murder happened in the first place. How could a gunman who attacked two mosques be able to live stream this criminal violence on Facebook for 17 minutes using an app designed for extreme sports enthusiasts? How could much of it still be shared hours later? The New Zealand Prime Minister quickly stated that she wanted to discuss live streaming with Facebook. That's much less surprising than the fact that Facebook didn't demonstrate the ability to shut down this stuff within seconds. No television station would have allowed that to happen. Senior politicians have called on social media platforms to be able to react more quickly and stop the broadcast of live events. It's said that the fact that social media platforms were actually playing a video made by a man accused of murder was way out of order. Those that control and own social media platforms should deal with it straight away and stop these things being broadcast, they said. And so we find ourselves discussing the whole issue of regulating social media once again. So far, they've just not done it. And more to the point, they have even failed to offer any way of doing it. I don't do Facebook. I don't take pictures of my lunch. I don't update my status every two minutes. And I don't watch live streaming of terrible events on social media. But others do. And because others do, it might just be time to realize that there are limits to what should be broadcast. Limits that, so far, the social networks simply don't seem able to understand. Over the past decade, London's economy has expanded by a fifth. Ever more shops and restaurants have opened to serve its residents. The population of London and the urban area surrounding it increased by 1.1 million between 2008 and 2017. Up to 10 million people, in fact. But something's gone wrong. Many more people pack their bags and leave the capital for elsewhere in England and Wales than make the journey the other way round. Over the past decade, over half a million Britons left London compared to those who moved into it. Why is this? Firstly, almost 800,000 more people were born in London than died there between 2009 and 2017. Secondly, it's all about international immigration. There was an increase of 860,000 between 2009 and 2017, with more than half coming from the EU. By 2017, 3.6 million people living in the city were born overseas. Lots of people moved to London in their 20s to get work or just to enjoy hours of commuting and staring at people who look miserable, which is pretty much a pastime everyone in London gets involved with. But among almost every other age group, the capital sees more people leaving than arriving. It's hardly surprising. Housing costs in London are absolutely ridiculous. For the price of a small flat in London, you could probably buy a castle in the north of England. Or you could maybe even afford to buy the whole of a small country like Iceland. 
London claims to be a centre for wealth generation and a home of opportunity. Even if that's true, just remember that if you want to buy a house in the capital to end up with a small fortune, you have to start with a large one. And there's another place you can have a higher, more peaceful quality of life and not break the bank by buying a house. Remember this, it's called the rest of the world. Let's take a look at a free country, also known as France, which might not be quite so free in the near future. France's Prime Minister announced recently that he wanted to crack down on rioters after a new flare-up of violence the government blamed on that feisty fellowship known as the Yellow Vest protest movement. The decision was made after panic gripped cabinet ministers and President Macron, who's about as popular as raw sewage in the River Seine right now. So Prime Minister Edouard Philippe's office announced that the security forces would get pushy with the protesters. It was so bad that apparently President Macron even cut short a skiing trip to race back to Paris to make sure that all this demonstrating didn't happen again. Maybe one reason Macron's gone mad about it is because these troubles have affected the richest parts of Paris. Vandals smashed windows and looted luxury stores while lighting fires along Paris's Champs-Élysées Avenue as they clashed with riot police in the centre of the city. The battle lines are drawn and here's how it looks. On the one side, the people are rebelling against the government. Meanwhile, the government, originally formed by the rebellion of the people, is trying to stop the rebellion. This issue comes and goes in Paris. And meanwhile, the bad feeling grows. What's for sure is that this will rumble on right up to the next presidential elections. Macron's men and women can tell everyone to stop. They can also send out the troops. But you can't imprison a point of view. The Yellow Vest movement emerged in November 2018, originally to oppose now abandoned fuel tax rises and the high cost of living. The protests expanded almost out of control to slam Macron, his pro-business reforms, and what the demonstrators regard as his elitism. In response, Macron offered a package worth over 10 billion euros to boost the incomes of the poorest workers and the pensioners. But he's not been able to pay off the protesters just yet. It might be that, as well as costing billions to the government, this protest could go on to cost the president his job. And as usual, I'll make some predictions about what could happen in the weeks ahead. Firstly, Facebook will continue to talk about controlling what is broadcast on Facebook without doing anything about what's broadcast on Facebook. So many people will leave London that the capital will be redesignated as a nature reserve for wildlife and people who enjoy living in tiny apartments and being miserable. And President Macron, realising that the public feel too poor to have a decent standard of living, will recall the words of a former French aristocrat and announce, let them eat cake. That's it for this week. Thanks for watching and join me next time for Press Release, the show that takes the political fiction out of the political friction. Hold the front page, but don't trust it. Trust me.